of the nurses really have a huge problem, so they, um, they, they're being ostracized by their colleagues. They're, they're not allowed to go to church anymore because they, they, they call them murderers. They, they call their children, they, their children up at school are being valid and they, they tell them, your oh, mother is a killer. I went to my minister, they didn't tell him that I'm, I'm busy with it, doing the service part. Uh, We're a little scared. I just asked him, what does he think about this? Because it's... I'm, I'm not feeling comfortable and uh, it's against us, uh, our religious. And uh, it, don't, it, would, it would suggest me not to do it. On the other hand, you see, they don't have anyone, everybody's refusing. As I said, the service must go on. There is people that you must yell, and that's maybe the reason why I'm doing it. I don't know. I would say maybe I'm confused. who said that they personally, the reason why they had become involved in, in abortion care is that they personally had, ex either they or a friend or family member had, you know, needed an abortion and they'd been personally involved in some way, or whether it was a patient who had died or a, a daughter or somebody who needed an abortion, maybe they themselves had had an abortion. Basically, it started when I was very young, I was still a teenager and um, felt pregnant, I uh, wasn't ready to be a mom. Um, then unfortunately I tried lots of things. You know, friends would say use this and I one would say use that. And one would say um, take lots of aspirin, you try that, doesn't help. And uh, you just become hopeless. And uh, one would say there's a nurse that stays in a certain area, go and visit her and you go there, she's out of town. And uh, you keep trying until you just lose hope. Because you try until, you know, while, while you're still looking for this hope, I mean for this help, time is actually flying, you know. When I see a teenager who's actually pregnant and is not ready to be a mom, eh, I understand what she's going through. It's against my religion for me as a person to go for an abortion. But it's not for me, uh, um, it's not like um, illegal or against my religion to help somebody. For me it's the same like giving a tablet, like a high blood pressure or any other tablet or any injection to somebody. Mm -hmm. You're helping the person. I'm doing it in my workplace and I'm covered. So I don't feel guilty or anything. There's a huge number of second-term um, clients, which for us is worrying because it means that um, they have waited too long. And why is this? If you don't know the actual law, then it's a problem because then they refer somebody here and then they get referred back there and then they get sent there and then they get told to go there and so on and uh, by the time they actually see somebody they're very quite advanced or in the second trimester so that's obviously not optimal. I think for the rural uh, population um, access to facilities where abortions can be done um, is limited um, and that people have to travel far um, we get clients from um, the Eastern Cape and so on that uh, would come here specifically and then often they are late, you know, that also move into the second trimester because they couldn't access a facility, you know, in the rural area. I would say in the rural areas they do anything to access the contraceptive. Sometimes they go to clinics. You hear stories like they have to walk about 10 kilometers or even more, you know, to get to a clinic to a point where they can access the contraceptive. You understand that in those areas, it's, it's either an area 
that will cover five different villages has got only one uh, day hospital and uh, obviously they are overstressed you know and some of them don't even know about the fact that they can go there It was awful for me. I still don't think I've really been able to deal with the intense anger and sadness that I have felt that, you know, it's it's mixed up with feelings of working still in, in a hospital that was segregated, where black women had poor, poor services in comparison to white women. And when I only saw black women really coming in for these um, for illegal abortions. These women were generally would come in after a weekend and they would have fever, they would be very, very ill, they would have a very um, hard abdomen because there was an infection. They would need to go to the theatre and be put on anti antibiotics. Some of them needed to have a hysterectomy. And nobody ever taught me as a nurse what actually was happening then. They were seen as dirty and um, they were seen as naughty. Given the context in South Africa, um, it was really important to have black women speaking out about um, the injustices of not being having access to abortion because as a white woman and as a wealthy woman one had recourse even under apartheid. You know, the previous act, you know, one could say one's suicidal and go to a psychiatrist and then get a, a termination. But what needed to be emphasized was it was black women that were suffering and black women that were obtaining illegal abortions that were poor for their health um, dying and the medical research council research indicated that there were 425 women estimated to die every year from backstreet abortions I stopped getting my period, and then, but I didn't even notice, honestly, I didn't even notice that, that, that you know, my period is going, and all the symptoms of pregnancy, I didn't even notice it, and then, I just saw my stomach started getting hard, and, but that didn't, I didn't even notice that, my stomach just looked a bit big one, and looked, and I looked, and I was like, oh my god, something is not right here. I told my cousin, we told my grandmother, we told her mother, we told my grandmother, we told my grandfather. They chucked me out of the house. It's like a mall, it's called the Golden Acre. And that mall, and I sleep in front of the doors. It's like down escalated. It's horrible, it's extremely horrible. Half the night I have to lay like with my one eye open <laughs> because I have to like be sure about who's coming, you know, helping, you know, again, you know, and being arrested and stuff by the guys here yeah, at night. It's terrible in the daytime walking around like this. And sometimes I get so tired, I just want to like go sleep or take a nap, like being pregnant, you just want to sleep. And I can't even sleep, I don't know where. So sometimes when I sit on the side of the pavement, and I just like put my head down and close my eyes for a while. Sometimes I just wish I was dead, you know. It's horrible, seriously. And when you ask people for money, they are so rude. Um, they will like shunt you to be the hand. I can't give a baby a life on the street. I can't. How am I gonna do it, you know? 
go to look for a job with the baby. People's not gonna give me work. If you go to the clinic here, yeah, you put it in the night, and the nurses, they will be like, you know, they'll scale you out and sweet you. And um, I don't know how to, they rude, the nurses. Um, they'll ask you, say, if, if you wanna go to a clinic and you wanna go on to the contraceptive, contraception the nurses will ask you why you're so young what are you having sex for now this age and that's what I'm scared of I would even do it on my own like maybe like tying it open on my stomach or something I, I know this sounds harsh but um yeah my only way out